well, welcome to Mimi Meets. I'm Movie Mad Mimi, and I've absolutely been enjoying uh, everything Rings of Power these last few weeks. <laughs> So have oh, you been awesome. watching it? Like, like as a fan, have you been watching it every week? Yeah, I have been actually. I've been, uh, yeah, every Friday at work we'll be kind of getting ready for, you know, oh, it, it, tonight's the night and then we'll go home and, and have a watch. Um, and yeah, so I, I've been really enjoying it too. It's, it's, it's interesting to see it from knowing all the, you know, where it's going and well, mostly where it's going. Um, but there's still a little, you know, a bit of excitement and uh, things are being revealed to me as I watch it. But yeah, I've been been hanging on it as well it, yeah, it's been pretty cool yeah it's been awesome we'll talk about more about lord of the rings in a minute but to start things off i just wanted to ask you like a movie mad question which i love to ask so what what's the first film that made you fall in love with cinema the first film that made me fall in love with cinema yeah um i think i think the thing that that made me become a cinephile uh, which is what I like to, to, to say, is um, Alien, the first Alien by um, Ridley mm. Scott. Mm -hmm. um, that was a film that really transcended, uh, I think, that, that bridge between fantasy and reality and, and also just the way the characters reacted to a point where you, you forgot you were watching a movie and you were just going, what is going to happen? Yeah. Where, where is this going? And I'm so scared and I don't know who's going to die and who's, you know. So, yeah, that, that, that was the film that, that sort of, made me a, a, to, into movies to being completely mad about film. That is still my favourite film ever. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm. Uh, so so um, I know you've had like a long history now with Becca. It's been like, what is it, been 23 years? So... Yeah, I think it's getting up to 24, actually. <laughs> wow. So tell me about yeah. how that journey began, like all the way back in like the late 90s, I'm guessing. Yep, yep. Uh, I started in 1999 at Weta. Um, my, my brother and I growing up made films uh, like Alien Predator and uh, we, we basically copied those films and made them on the old Super 8, which is the, you know, the ones where yeah. you actually have to get them processed. Uh, and so we did that all growing up in, in Australia where I grew up, but I'm actually born in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, he went, I was doing uh, dance, gymnastics um, and acting in school. Uh, and then he, he was focusing more on the prop making. Uh, oh. and creature effects kind of stuff side and he went to um NIDA which is kind of like RADA for theater theater crafts and theater props mm -hmm. and then he met a guy uh, called Jason Doherty in um in a makeup convention in Australia who said hey you should come and come and come to New Zealand we're working on this secret project uh, <laughs> and so he he went over to, to to Wellington to find out what the secret project was and then he I had just finished high school and he was like um I was going to go to NIDA as well for to study acting uh, mm -hmm. and, and he was like, no, no, you should come to, to New Zealand for a little, little holiday before you, you, I'm like New Zealand, nothing happens in New Zealand in the late nineties. Uh, and then yeah, <laughs> I, I got on the plane and found out it was, um, uh, Lord of the Rings. And so I started working in the creature effects shop, uh, in, in Weta in 99, making forks and hobbit feet and, um, Urukai, um, arms and legs. And yeah, that was me for five years, uh, working on rings nonstop. Uh, and that, yeah, that was a, that was a pretty big dream come true uh, for me. It's um, amazing. Yeah, it was pretty like, amazing. Mm. It's amazing, like the, the sort of intricacies that go into like kind of mold making and prosthetics and like such a big skill that I think just is being recognized now. I think after like Lord of the Rings, especially the last 20 years, people have uh, really like loved everything that Weta does. And I'm thinking, yeah, like I was even like when I was watching Rings of Power, I was like, oh my God, these Uruks are amazing. They're my favorite so, so far. My favorite storyline has been like the Uruk storyline because it kind of like takes me back to like the Peter Jackson's kind of world that I fell in love with. Like that's why I've just been amazed by all the sort of attention to detail that goes in like everything you do. It must take months, I'm guessing. <laughs> it, it takes it takes months and months, definitely. And and uh, like Lord of the Rings, the original one, mm -hmm. we they they were doing pre-production on it for like three or four years before they yeah. started shooting. Mm -hmm. um and the the prosthetics that we did for that they took months and months to create but then there was a certain stage we got in the, the production where we made we would make hero character like for the orcs or the uruks or the urukai um i'm very happy that you said uruk by the way um uh, i know you said you I, didn't I know. say I wouldn't, I wouldn't say i wouldn't dare say it <laughs> No. Yeah, it, it was actually, it's really, I really, I heard it and I was really like, oh, yes, she's definitely seeing the last episode with, um, with yes, Adar. Yes, we prefer Uruk. Uh, we prefer Uruk. Oh, yes. 
uruk, yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, when we're making the uruk uh, prosthetics uh, back on the original rings, we'd have the the lead characters um, that you'd, you'd get, like the ones that like Jed Brophy was playing or Stephen yeah. Ewer were playing. Uh, and then after a while, we, we started, we had too many of the uruks to make for every every shoot day. We were making, like sometimes I think we were, we were making five or six uruks like to, to be on different um, units. So yeah. we had seven units shooting one time. So we just had so many of these things to do and the urukai and then also the goblins. And so it was just, it was mental. And so we ended up doing what we called mix and match, which is where you'd have uh, a basically like a neck. It's kind of like a hoodie. So it'd be like a yeah. hoodie that would go up first. Yeah. And then, then you'd have a, a face piece, a nose piece, and then a chin piece. And then you would mix and match those and make up a new uruk every morning. Uh, you'd yeah. just basically grab bits out of the box and then just kind of paint them and then change them up. And you had a pair of teeth that you would kind of use for those specific um, uruks. And, and we, we were making, yeah, like, Towards the end, like on Palinor Fields, we were making five or six uh, new Uruks every day, um, which was a challenge, but which was really cool. And then the difference that we got with, with um, you know, that was back in, in 99 where everything was shot on 35 millimeter. I still remember, mm -hmm. remember it shooting on film, whereas, whereas now it's all on digital. It's quite yeah. different. Um, and I think there was a level of, um, the, the Uruks were much darker as well. Uh, on rings they, they, whereas in, in rings of power they're much lighter and they're much kind of paler skin yeah. uh, and they're also made of a completely different product in Lo Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson's they're made of foam latex which is kind of like old school kind of cushions uh, okay. but the ones on rings of power are made of um, silicon uh, quite sophisticated silicon um, prosthetics that we couldn't make back in 99 apart from on um, Gimli Gimli's makeup was silicon but yeah, so the technology has changed completely, but also like 8K, like now that there's 8K uh, live, I know it, it's so scary. Watching that scene with you uh, as McGrot, this is so real. Like you feel like you can just go and grab him like and touch his face or something. And it just, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, there's, there's a certain um, uh, level of realism that you get from practical effects that is very difficult to get with um, CGI effects. Yeah. And it's not impossible. But I think, I think the thing is, is that I work in the 3D space a lot now, um, making um, props and costumes for that wetter. You're kind of creating a new reality every yeah. time you're working with CGI. Whereas you look back at the 80s and 90s horror films, and if they light it dark and they put enough blood on it, it looks so real. And I think uh, you can kind of be forgiven like certain, certain prosthetics that may not look perfect. You still buy them and you still uh, you totally believe they're real. Yeah. because they're in the right lighting state they're in the right you exactly. know the right points and so whereas the cgi artists they have to recreate that from scratch and unless they're given lots and lots of time uh it's really hard to to get it a hundred percent but at the same time i think a lot of people don't realize when they actually are watching cgi because i work for weta digital as well i'm oh, um, wow. doing motion i do motion capture quite a bit for them uh sort of creatures and stunts as well and often you'll watch the show and i'll be like oh there i am and it wasn't you know, I wasn't wearing makeup. I was wearing gray pajamas with dots on Oh, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, so there's, I think, I think it's, it all comes down to giving the right time and the right tool for the job. Going back to practical for, for, for this was really great because there were some people who really found it quite difficult to react to us in a really good way. They were actually quite scared. Um, which was I, awesome. I was going to say, like, I, I hope, like, you didn't speak to your kids dressed up as. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no. I, I ha haven't, haven't uh, spoken, and I they're a lot, they're older now, but like, oh, okay, <laughs> and eleven. But when they were younger, and I used to do it, I'd show them photos and say, "Oh, this is Daddy," and they'd just be like, really, really disgusting. Yeah. Um, but but now I think it's it's like my son is actually like totally into um into Rings of Power. Like oh, he's cool. he's like yeah he loves it uh, and his his favorite character is Aaron Deer, uh, which is you know a little bit upsetting that he's in love with an elf you know he wants to be an elf oh. and which is fine Aaron Deer's okay. cool Ismail's cool that's fine <laughs> no no, no. Um, well, I, I, you know I just want to tell you Magrot is like one of my favorites so far like that water ration scene you don't know what he's gonna do like like he's like. He's like, you know, he's gonna, he's up to something. Like the way he's looking, you know, there's definitely something wrong. Like he's gonna be, like he looks down and then like what he does, it's like everything about that because it just feels so like real. Like I feel like I was in there with them, with the elves. And, and I was like, oh my God, this is like how, like, 
all that stuff. I'm so excited to watch it. And that's why I wanted to speak with you because I was like, this guy is like amazing. I love this character. Oh. And uh, so uh, does, how do you like kind of emotionally prepare when, when you like start a scene? Like, because I know you get into character, that must take ages. For me, I, it, it, like I find um, what I call straight acting, uh, which is when I'm acting as, as me in my face. I find it more difficult um, because every emotion is real and, and sort of resonated on your face and you can, you can see the other, other performers and you've got to really be in the moment. Um, and there's a certain level of transcendence that you get when you're playing a creature, especially a creature, because I do a lot of stunt stuff, a stunt performance, and, and those things is very much body mechanics and obviously there's always breathing and stuff in there. But for a character like Magrot, it, it's, it's very it's it's you you kind of get in the chair and you just see yourself starting to change throughout the morning and it's it yeah. really great where you kind of it all it's funny you've got like bits of like you know cotton wool stuck up your nose and you know and they're kind of you know scissors and, and chopping and then there's a certain point where you start to see the character coming in yeah. uh and then you kind of you know when when they're when they're starting to do the final airbrushing you can kind of really start to kind of find yourself and look in the mirror and go oh, yeah there it is there it is and then especially when the teeth and the eyes go in and you just, you kind of lose yourself in a really cool way. Um, and, and you can really kind of, uh, kind of go into those really dark places and, and go and you can, you can really kind of start to, to imagine yourself as this creature. Um, and I think the thing that was so, was so good about that, that character was that, as you said, you didn't know, you knew he was up to something, but you didn't know what it was. And he came out so nice and so welcoming and everyone's like, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong here. Uh, and I think it was really good to see that level of uh, deception in, in, yeah. in an Uruk. Because I think most of the time that Uruks have been, and we really wanted to do that in this in the show. And we had a lot of conversations with um, Joseph and the showrunners uh, about um, how we wanted these Uruks to be different from the ones we've yeah. seen in, 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 in the second, you know, in third ages. And so there yeah. was, it was really important that we were like, well, how are they different? And how we saw them, was was that level of sophistication? They're much closer to elves than in, in, in LOTR. I thought that, yeah. And so that's why you can get that kind of. They're not they're corrupted, but they're not fully corrupted, and so they have those levels of kind of uh, you know are, are kind of looking at these elves. And I remember writing. I was doing some notes before the before the we started to shoot those scenes, and I remember a, a clear line that it was figuring out why was it that I was so angry with these elves? What was it about them that I didn't yeah. like? And it, I, I, the line I came up with was, elves want everyone to live like they do. And they don't care. Uh, they think they're so much better than us. They would have us all living like birds in a trees. We want sophistication. We want industry. We want, you know, the ability to be who we want to be. And, and it was that kind of, that's what drove me is, is that I'm like, right, you think you're all that cool? You think you're all that good? No, you're not. We want to be who we want to be, which is really weird when they're such evil characters. It was a, a really strange place to go. And then, then when, once, you, once you slit someone's throat like that, you kind of can't help yourself but really, really get into it. <laughs> we saw, like, um, Adar saying, yeah, this is all we want. We want a kind of a place. And how did you kind of work with Joseph, and Jed and Phil, all these fantastic Uruks? Jed, Jed and I, Jed and I and Phil, I've known Phil for, for quite a few years, but Jed yeah. and I have actually been friends for 20 years because yeah. I put him in makeup on, on, on Lord of the Rings. So, so Jen and I, and, and have acted with him for a few years as well. And so we, we had a great time um, discussing uh, together and, and also Rob who came on um, Robert Strange he's, he's now become yeah. a really good friend of ours. Um, we, we've, we just kind of, we, we initially, we kind of initially got in there going, okay, who are these characters? And we knew, you know, the time frame was set. And Jed Brophy is a massive Tolkien fan as well. Mm -hmm. um, but with talking with Joseph, Joseph, had this level of care about the characters, but also about, about what it was that he was trying to save his character and with his journey um, mm. through the world, which is, and I think he, and I'm so glad that episode six um, aired and yeah. being able to see that scene with him and Galadriel was so beautiful and poignant because it's exactly what was the kind of the, the essence of what we were trying to do, which is, um, well, all, every, every creature has a heart, every creature has a name even though, you know, you see them as being evil. And I think it, it, it really makes you, like, it, it kind of have obviously references back to, to where we are. Um, but we really wanted to make sure that they weren't just nameless 
cannon fodder that they that the characters that you do meet did feel like real real characters and i think the the, the one of the 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 scenes that um kind of showed joseph's um or adar's um motives was with a scene when he he kills me in in, in episode i four. was just about to say yeah because if you think about what gladwell is saying is that she she wants to take every That's uruk it. and destroy yeah. them and it's like well who are you to say like you think about spiders or um you know cockroaches and or you know or you know predators that are that are deemed to be to be bad they're still a being uh and and do they not have the right to exist we know where they go in you know in fellowship and return of the king we know what type the, the uruks are going to go to but yet it is it is really interesting kind of uh, duplicity to look at it they're, they're not mindless soulless no. animals they they actually are people and and i think i think that's why joseph He's he's a very amazing actor to work with. Like he was, I was quite intimidated to be honest um, uh, when I when I was doing that that scene with him. But he had a really great process of that that I was on the stretcher, on the trench, and I was you know dying, and he didn't want to talk to me or see me before the scene. And so when he comes and arrives, he I'm actually seeing him for the first time, and he has oh, that wow. that moment over me, and 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 we had no conversation prior um to it um which was really great because i didn't know what his you know he he's obviously got a much larger role in the show so i want to make sure that his process is going to work for his character but it was a really great way to do it to have him just turn up um mm. and and then and have that scene with me it was it was really really great and i really i'm glad they they didn't put the whole funeral scene in um where you know where jed comes in and says Nam Paku Busha, yeah. and he takes a part of my armor there was actually all the other, um, like Phil and Rob also came in and, and took parts of my armor and said the same blessing. Um, but I, I hope that it kind of came across as well as to show that they weren't mindless scavengers, that they actually had a sort of sense of, of um, society in there, which I hope, I hope came yeah. through. That scene was so emotionally rich, I would say, like, like the, the fact, like, even when Ada was kind of like having to uh, kill him, it's like kind of like that's his child in a way. That's, he, he's their father. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because yeah, the whole point is, is that he sees us yeah. as our children. And yeah, oh, I'm so glad that that, that came through because we, we really, really tried to, to keep that. And in, in fact, it, 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 was really, it was really wonderful to see the show because um, he Joseph and I had talked about that scene with Galadriel and I'd never seen it. And so when I saw it on, um, on a Friday night when I watched it, I was just like, yeah, you tell her. <laughs> what Galadriel is saying is like way worse than what he says because <laughs> like yeah. she, that's quite evil I'm thinking and he's like saying yeah well Morgoth's uh, successor could be you <laughs> in a way he's said that yeah. I know it's funny when you when you and I, I hope the audience watches that and, and they, they they're kind of going along with Galadriel and then they kind of suddenly turn and go well hang on a sec yeah that, it's one thing to say you don't want Sauron to come and, and destroy but it's another thing to to wipe a whole species off the face yeah. of the earth yeah. it's it's i think it, it makes you question things which is which is really great which i think that the show has done that because i remember watching the original series and and really feeling those those kind of moral questions yeah. at the same time and and feeling that that you know it was much more of a of a duty i think and a loyalty and in, in, in the original series is what do you do to stand up to to the to the evil powers whereas in this one i think it's making you question well, what is evil um, yeah, and really Jed and I, Jed and I said it a lot. Uh, that that, and I'm glad that you like the Uruks. Is that you can't have good heroes without good villains. Exactly. So you, you need to have good villains. And and now as you're questioning, yeah, but who's the villain in the show? You know, I I'm seriously like I'm thinking like I I'm really loving the Uruk story, and I actually secretly want them to kind of like live on <laughs> and walk. I'm thinking, yeah, like so. There's something. Is there something wrong with me that I'm loving the Uruk way more than the good guys? <laughs> so like this has kind of been like the one that kind of takes me back to like why I fell in love with like Peter Jackson's films, and because it, it's so dark. Like that. That's the part mm. I love because like. That there's a, such a sense of danger throughout the entire episode. It's like from there's mm. no chance to digest anything. Like they keep coming at them. Like <laughs> like you see, like everything. They they, they don't give up. <laughs> I know it was crazy because I started watching the episode, um, and and then um, Adar's giving us that speech at the start, and I'm like, yeah. oh man, we're right in there. We're we're getting straight into it. Because um, yeah. you know you shoot everything out of sequence, and and so you yeah, don't. Yeah, sure. And we we. Yeah. We could only read the scripts of the scenes we were in. We didn't get to read anyone else's um, yeah. scenes or anyone else's scripts. 
and then watching that episode yeah it was um like I, I knew where it's all going but I was I was on the edge of my seat as well and I, ha- I have to just say also that that I think um the 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 stunt crew um uh did such an amazing job and and the cast of of keeping it really really um visceral and scary uh and the knowing knowing how much effort goes into each one of those scenes and each one of those beats i i really i i just think it was an amazing feat to have it have it have it be like that and also i have to say ismail he he just nailed it like he i i was a fan of him the minute i started working with him because he's such a nice guy and he's so super cool but then he just like he kicked ass in that episode like he was he was just so awesome and and he's doing a lot of those stunts himself he he's he's doing as much as he's basically allowed to do uh and that big fight with the with the big berserker Uruk, yeah um is, is a friend of mine mike and mike is massive like yeah, he's like he's massive. Is, that, is he real like is he really that big <laughs> he's really that big he's really that big like he whenever he says hi to me he's like oh hello luke and like his Aww. hand just goes right down yeah. <laughs> he's a lovely lovely guy but but yeah no Ismail is really really going for it and and it was such a and the whole the whole episode was just so awesome um and it, and it yeah it, it was it was riveting and then and then at the end with with the um uh with the turnkey with Waldrig and the big you know it, oh it like I knew I knew the whole story but even but watching got, it and, and and seeing the explosions and then seeing the big um uh, meteors coming down and like killing like five or six people at a time it was just like like that's one thing I think that they're able to do on this show that they weren't on the original rings um, is we made, I'm, I used to make 40 liters of blood, both red human blood and orc blood a week to send to set. Uh, yeah. And they would go through 40, 40 liters of blood uh, a week each. And you just don't see it that much in, in, in Lord of the Rings, the, the original series, because it's just it, the ratings. Whereas in, in this one, having the blood just the like splattering off everywhere uh, was, like was um, I mean, wound was just uh, oozing. And I'm like, what's that about Bronwyn's wound? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a that was a pretty hardcore scene, and it was it was it was really cool. And I'm actually one of the um, Uruks in in the tavern. Uh, after that, I'm the I one that's holding the the sickle to, I to um, I was like, this is to Ismail's throat. <laughs> I do not. I, oh, awesome. I, I, I've, I've noticed that I've been going through it, and I'm thinking, where is Luke? And I can, I can actually see. You. I can tell this is you. Like you're, that, that's your face. I can tell. Like this. I don't know what oh, it is. Awesome. But I can just tell. I'm also. Uh, I, I play three. There's one at the at the tree line with the sun rising. You know, in the uh, episode, and I'm the one screaming at. Um, yeah, at, yeah. Uh, at Aaron Deer, um, when I'm so frustrated, and then actually, I'm I'm the first orc uh, that dies. Uh, and when it gets an arrow in his throat uh, at the, in the prologue at the very beginning yeah. of, the, of the series yeah so because that's the great thing is they can just switch our faces and, and we yeah. get to play many people I love that scene like especially like the, when you mentioned the starting when you when he's kind of like getting ready for like the battle I love that scene mm. it's just so dimly lit and it's just all you see is the fire and also when he's planting the seeds like for like mm. new life in defiance of death and I Obviously, growing up with Lord of the Rings, like uh, from like two thousand one, you know what it's become. But like, kind of seeing yeah. that formation, it's just uh, like that's just that that's been like the best part of Rings of Power for me. Just kind of like thinking, oh yeah, this is okay. This is what that's going to become, and it's kind of like just seeing how things have uh, developed. Like, you were mentioning Aaron Deer, like as a new character, he's just done so much. Like, it's just so yeah, like, he- yeah. He, I, I think he's he's like he's like Aragorn and Legolas sort of mixed together, and and I, that's what I, I I love about him so much. And it's also so nice to see, I think the the love story between him and Bronwyn is is like I love that line. I hadn't heard it before because as I hadn't read the script when he says, "What is she? What are you saying to me?" And she says, "What I've I've said with everything but words a thousand times." And it's just like that's such a beautiful uh, way to articulate that, that forbidden love. And it, it it's, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, as I said, I'm a fan of him, but I'm also a fan of, of the character because the character is, is playing all those things of loyalty and, and honor and, and having to, you know, to do what is, is right, but not what he wants. But, but also he's just kick ass as well. Like <laughs> my son, like literally tonight was, was jumping around the, the, the living oh, room pretending to be Aaron Deer. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, and and doing all, all the stuff on the couch because he just he just loves the character so much, which is just that's and that's the thing for me is is that I'm I'm a fan of of these these types of films. As you can see behind me, these are my model kits from when I was oh, a kid. Oh wow! I, I must show you my one. It brings everyone together. Like I went to like um, the, the premiere that happened in Leicester Square, and it's so nice, kind of like seeing everyone. Like everyone's just there mm. because of their love for Lord of the Rings. So what, what's, yeah. your favorite, what's your favorite thing about Lord of the Rings? Because you've been a part of it for so long. Like, is there something that you I, just love? <laughs> I think I think the two, the two things I love, which is which is really interesting, is is that the first one is just how rich and deep the history is. It goes on like you you listen to to someone like me who who I know enough to kind of talk to someone who's a Tolkien fan. Like I I read The Hobbit. Uh, and I've had a lot and lot of to do with the films and the lore yes. in the background, but I, I haven't haven't delved into it. But then I have friends at, at, who I know, like Jed Brophy, um, and then a, a Vaughan Flanagan, who's a designer at Weta, and and and, and Daniel Faulkner, who who's a major designer who who designed on the um, Lord of the Rings series. Um, and the, it's so rich and so deep, and the history is just so vast that it. That, that you can lose yourself in it and and I, I start talking like I can hear myself talking to my to my son about oh no 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 this is what's going to happen to Numenor and you know because of this and da, 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 da. and, and yeah. you just it, it's so in, in you, you it's, it's pure escapism um, but then at the end of the day I think there's a certain the, this is the second thing I really like about it um, up, up, the fans is actually probably number one but as far as the actual world is is that the, the life lessons that it teaches you and teaching you right from wrong. You're seeing people who are tested the very, very worst of their lives and, and the hardest conditions and they, the decisions they make is, is, is kind of really lucky. I think about Sam and Aragorn, uh, but then also now, you know, out in there uh, and, and you, you really, it, it makes you feel uh, empowered that, that, that good can triumph over evil or that, that people will do the right thing. Um, and that's that's why I, I really like it. And but but overall, that is the fans. Is the fans are they are the the most wonderful, welcoming, and um and just enthusiastic people. Because I and I love enthusiasm. Because you, you only get one life, so you might as well enjoy it and have have enthusiasm towards it. And so that's what I really love about the the fan base is that they are very enthusiastic. And I think I think that's what's true. Like the, I, uh, I this has been like a. I don't know, it's been ages since I felt so enthusiastic about like a show that comes on like once a week. And you know, like it takes you back to like the good old days where you don't binge watch, you kind of like wait, you have to wait for the next episode, wait one week, kind of like, it just gives you a chance to like savor it. And like, I prefer this kind of technique, especially with Rings of Power because it's such a huge show on such a huge yeah. scale. It, it, it yeah. deserves that kind of timeline. <laughs> I, I, I completely agree with you. And it's interesting that I've got some friends who are like, I'm going to wait to watch the whole thing as one. No. Um, but I, 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 feel, I feel like, yeah, that, that whole kind of, oh, now what, now what? But I mean, as I said, I already know it, but I'm still waiting for the next week. And which is actually, I just struck me, I, I, I've never actually asked someone um, how, how they were felt when the original series came out, when you had to wait a year between each film. Um, because I, I, I was working, like we, we finished on the first film and then we had to do pickups oh, for the second film. And then the third film, we actually ended up shooting for like 360 days on the third film of pickups. So for us, we were, we were constantly in it and, and we didn't really know, know but it, it must have been difficult to wait for a year. It was, like I, uh, when Fellowship released, I was nine. So I watched it when I was nine. And I just remember being really fascinated by Lurtz, oh. <laughs> the character. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like scared, but really fascinated by Lurtz and that scene with Boromir and Lurtz in the end just kind of like as a nine-year-old I was like so like <laughs> moved by this and I'm like and then then I had the best experience actually Two Towers was my favorite cinema experience like so I went like on the opening night I was like with my cousins and my auntie and uncle and it was like we kind of like had to book it like in advance because the tickets were getting like sold out like crazy. So, and so I know I was quite young, but still like I was, I was pretty much like, I, I was really into it. I've grown up like, even as a child, I was watching horror films and this is really bad. I, I don't encourage it, but like as a child, I did watch like Salem's Lot and all oh, the wow. like, Yes, but the, the wait was long, I must say, like like waiting a year. 
after each yeah. just waiting a week but like waiting a year in between each film and then uh, but then when I think Two Towers still like kind of like has that special moment like when I was watching the Battle of Helm's Deep that's still like mm. one of my favorites I, and this this episode actually uh, kind of reminded me I think it's that sort of tension build up was there it just reminded me so much of that tension build up in Helm's Deep I don't know what mm. it is that it's so that's why it, it took me back to that original cinema experience I had 20 years ago now and and so oh, that's, that's awesome. why yeah that's why I've enjoyed Rings of Power so much because I still mm. treat it as a, as a film like the way we watch it is like we have to watch it on a big screen no no laptops <laughs> no phones <laughs> watch it properly give it the same respect because of the fact that it's been done on such a huge scale so much work has gone into it and yeah that's that's so good because it's it's nice to hear that because you, I, I think a lot of the time, especially today, media is digested in such a different way to what it was uh, back when I was young, but also back when movies, you know, um, in 2000s. And so to have, to have, you know, I, I think it's nice that I, I think if you, if you invest in something, you know, you get what you put in. Uh, and I think sometimes people are a little bit like, you know, watching it on their phone or something like that. And, mm-hmm. oh, it doesn't look that epic. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta give it its time. And, and I think it's, exactly. it's, um, it, it's it's really nice to hear that because because I'm watching it. I've got a, a cinema at home, a, a big cinema surround sound. And I watch it on that, and it's 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 pretty awesome. Um, and and I I think I think giving it its time is important because there's there is a lot, and and that's the thing is is that um, there's so many people uh, to to like you know to come together to get to this point, uh, like thousands of people, uh, and and even even from from my my part in it, like. I know, and I, I always talk about it like a triangle. I'm the pointy end of the triangle, and behind me, it's just rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of people who are mm. getting you to that point. And so you've got to make sure that when you are on set and you're performing and you're in that scene, that you've got to give it every part of, of what it's worth um, for, for, for not only the crew yeah. and, the, and the, the writers and everyone who's got it there, but definitely for the fans and, and for the audience because hopefully it shows and I'm so glad that it does, it does um, because yeah. we we really really um, pushed ourselves uh, I think on this one like there's there was actually a big battle um, the, the the fight scene in the trench that we did was much actually much longer oh, okay. um, but I, for, for time they had, obviously you know they just had to, to cut it down um, but we you know we we busted our gut, gut for that and I think I even saw on Ismail's Instagram he said I hope you like this last episode a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into that, and I, I know mm. lots of my friends. Um, you know, the stunt performers and and other creature performers, and then all the the you know the actors really giving themselves their all to it. And it's so nice to hear that people give it, it, it it's um it's time. Um, that's, uh, that's, and that's how it should be. That's oh, that's like, awesome! Like you need like all the sounds that go in, and you kind of hear like different sounds, like roaring sounds. You're not gonna be like. Mm not gonna be engrossed in the show if you watch it on a phone and I've told everyone that like whoever's watching I'm telling them like have you been watching it properly not not (laughs) (laughs) like this you would probably be able to see like in a cinema 20 years ago but now you're watching stuff like this at home and that's what's incredible Mm. about it and so it's it's, on a final note do you have like a favorite scene like in the rings of power favorite scene it probably is the scene between Galadriel and Adar that scene for me it is it just it was really really great uh to hear what we were trying to do articulated so well yeah uh um by by Adar well and I'm I'm so glad that you you said because you're the first person who's a someone who didn't work on the show uh, I've spoken to about that scene and you got it and I'm so happy that you got it. Oh, okay. um, but it, it's so it's so good to, to have that scene and go, yeah, who are the bad people here? Uh, what is it you're actually trying to do? Yeah. Uh, and and also just Joseph, he's he's so good. He lets he's, you. Yeah, and his obviously, soul. oh, he and you can just feel his his kind of his contempt, um, but also he's he's smug, but not in an arrogant way. Like I don't know, he's like he just knows what he's doing. Yeah. But also, I love Morford. Morford, she's she's an amazing performer. 
Oh my god, mm. like I'm thinking, yeah, and then I love this new side to Gladriel because I've seen her like as the calm Gladriel, like from the bird age, but like I, that scene I would say is uh, up there as well as one of my favorites because of the fact that he just kind of tells you what they want, really. That's all they want. Like it's kind of like it just makes you feel really sorry, like <laughs> for, mm. for, for them because that's all they really want and like just kind of to belong somewhere. And I know, I know, like they might be up to other things, but then. <laughs> feel like it's, it's, it's like you feel like oh well yeah it does make you that's the bit that made me really question myself I'm thinking yeah I'm not I'm not really I'm actually on Adar's side in this <laughs> more than Galadriel because Galadriel what what she says to him is way more than he needed to hear because <laughs> and she was probably gonna kill him if Hellbrand didn't yeah come yeah like yeah I'm so, I'm so interested in seeing like what that story between Helbrand and Adar is like have I seen you before like where do I know you from I'm just looking forward to that scene because like because mm. like you, I, the, he's about to tell him but then you're not sure like you're not sure like it keeps me guessing that's what I love about Wings of Power there's such suspense like throughout the series like is this what's yeah. gonna happen is he is, do you think he's going to be the witch king eventually or do you think he's going to be Sauron and like uh, Joseph I was, he's such a fine former like I'm like I'm just like amazed like like the fact that he's kind of like given so much emotion into it and they they have that more human kind of side to them like in a way he yeah. really wanted to, he really wanted that to come across and yeah. he, he was he, the, the two things I say about Joseph is one he is the most committed actor I've ever worked with like he is so committed to his to his role and how his performance is going to come across uh, he, he was just the, the process he went through was was really quite amazing uh, to get there but the other thing is he wanted us to be clear he was quite almost um mutinistic don't <laughs> let them do this don't let them say that you will not let them do it. like he was like really being our father and in a really nice way and the funny thing was, is that I think it, it, it was quite awesome to be quite duplicitous in, in the scene, because when we're talking to Joseph uh, away when he wasn't on set, you know, we were just talking and talking about being Uruk and being, you know, uh, working with him and who he was, is we're all like, yes, yes, yeah, we agree. We're, we're higher than that. We're, we're uh, higher uh, Uruks and we're closer to elves. And then we get on set and then the directors would be like, more orcish, be more grunty. Be more and we kind of had this kind of uh, yeah duplicity where we'd be like well that we're being told to be more creature but joseph our father is telling us to be more sophisticated oh. and it, it kind of played us really where there, there's a scene you, if you watch it again they, they've taken the, di the 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 voice out of um jed but as joseph walks in in the tavern scene yeah you'll see jed jed goes like this and he's actually going and what we were doing is, is that was basically when Adar was around, we would go Adar to tell all the other Uruks and they grow kind of like out of respect when he when he walks. Yes. In. Yeah. Yeah. That, sure, that, that like those grunts are like father. those are okay. respectful grunts. Um, and yeah, it was that type of stuff was just so so cool to play with, and and you, they really let us play with it, uh, which was so wonderful. Is because sometimes they're very rigid in how you have to perform. But I think uh, like Wayne, especially, and, and Charlotte as well, were very like, just do what you feel is right and, and pick it up. And so we really played with that quite a lot. Uh, the um, dialect coaches, uh, Leith and, um, and Jean were really good at kind of getting those out of us uh, and, and making it kind of feel animalistic, but still sophisticated. Um, yeah, it was the such movements, a cool- so. Yeah, the movements were like, so realistic like you're thinking like yeah like sort of uh, they've um, kind of evolved in a way <laughs> i think which is funny i think because we're watching the devolution of them because yeah. you see them in, in the fellowship and exactly and they're just weird. grunty horrible and i think it's because the whole you know um malcor morgoth had had taken them taken the elves and had had corrupted them and so they weren't as corrupted at this point than they are yeah. in, in the um in the other series and so what we're seeing is we're seeing back in time where they're much more closer to elves and I don't know I don't know if yeah they are noble or, or yeah yeah and it's so we had that in the body movements as well we wanted to be a little more upright uh, and not as sort of hunched and so we we, we you know that, that's something we played with as well which is really hard as a creature performer and, and as a as an actor you're going well they're evil and they're twisted but we've got to not be as twisted um and then because then I was watching actually 
was watching Fellowship of the Ring the other, like just the other night. Yeah. Uh, and I saw how how much they were really twisted uh, in that in that show, and and so it's good to see that that we have taken that and and kind of played with being you know a thousand yeah. or so years early. Like mm. Yeah, that's so yeah. true. It's it's because I think that's what it shows. Like in the second age, yeah, that they they haven't be, kind of been come that corrupted at, at that. I mean, they are corrupted, but like not as corrupted. But- Third age. Yes. By third yes. Age, yes. Gone. Like they're literally just gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, that's so true, and that's I think that's the side that I've been so interested to like know more about because, like, the, especially in the last scene, like when like the entire explosions happen, and you know that's why they're building the tunnels, and I'm like, yeah, that's what they were doing. It wasn't just to hide from the sunlight. It was actually there was something more at play, that like mm. all that intelligence has just gone through it, like kind of cause that eruption <laughs> but and I've seen like pictures of like Galadriel like in the orange like when there's dust flying but I didn't know what that was about but now I know like when she's going to be like like she wakes up after that aftermath and like so I'm like, I'm really looking forward to like the next episode I'm like I know you're not going to tell yes. me and I, I'm not going to ask I wouldn't dare <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I would. I, I wouldn't tell you even if you if you you had a had a had a knife to me. No, no. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> even if I was doing a Magrat style behavior, yeah. you know, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't no. ask because I just know it has to be given that respect and that time, and you have to have that patience to watch it. Thank cool. you so much uh, for taking the time. Oh no, you're amazing. welcome. Yeah, amazing. it's been so nice to talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah, and talk to. Talk to a, a fan who, um, and I'm just, I'm really chuffed that we're, whatever we were putting on screen is actually um, transferring to you guys and you're, you're picking up on those things uh, and that you're enjoying it because um, we, we worked really, really hard on it. And so I'm, I'm so happy that you guys, um, yeah, you're enjoying it because I'm, I'm enjoying it as well. It's like this epic scale has come back and I'm just, and that's why it kind of takes me back to my childhood, like watching it. Oh, that's so. awesome. Yeah, so thank you so much again. Nampath indeed. Nampath uglusha. Bye.